Looks good, Ralph. Yep, we're good. Good morning, uh, folks, and welcome to today's remote city council hearing of the Committee of Standards and Ethics. Make all panelists please start your videos. Silence all electronic devices. Again, silence all electronic devices. Thank you so much, Chair Chairman. We're ready to begin. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Steve Matty. I'm chair of the Committee on Standards and Ethics, and we're joined by my committee colleagues today. Council members Gibson, Chin, Kozowitz, and Levin. The committee is now returning to open session to make public the outcome of today's votes on the disciplinary matter against Council Member King. Today, the Committee on Standards and Ethics found the charges against Council Member King to have been substantiated and is recommending the sanction of expulsion to the full council. As you may recall, the four charges were violations of the council's anti-discrimination and harassment policies, prohibit prohibits against harassment and discrimination based upon gender, medical condition, or disability. Violations of conflicts of interest laws contained in chapter 68 of the city charter and council rules prohibiting misappropriation and misuse of council funds and violations of council resolution number 1138 of 2019, whose principal provisions provided for a 30 day suspension and for council member King to pay a $15,000 fine, pay for and take appropriate training and cooperate with a monitor to be placed in his office to ensure that a staff is appropriately managed pursuant to council rules and policies. This committee held a four day long disciplinary hearing on June 22nd, June 29th, July 7th and July 17th, 2020. The evidence against council member King was prevented, presented by special counsel to the council, Carrie Cohen, assisted by Amanda Geyer from Morrison and Forrester LLP. Council member King and his two attorneys attended the entire hearing and both attorneys were afforded the opportunity to question and call witnesses and object to and present evidence. We note that council member King was afforded full due process throughout this proceeding and that the case against him was conducted in full compliance with our disciplinary procedures. Since the close of the hearing, we have engaged in lengthy deliberations and have co closely gone through every charge against council member King and reviewed all the evidence presented and arguments made on each charge. Upon that review of the evidence, we find that the charges against council member Andy King are substantiated. As to the first charge of harassment and discrimination, the evidence presented demonstrated that from in or about September of 2017 through in or about January 2018, Councilmember King engaged in a number of actions towards one of his female staffers that constituted harassment and discrimination based upon gender, medical condition, and disability, actual or perceived, in violation of the policy. In response to the female staffers informing Councilmember King that she needed to seek emergency medical treatment for menstrual bleeding, Councilmember King treated her condition as a joke and made the discriminatory comment to put a Band-Aid on it. Shortly thereafter, he forced the staffer to take unnecessary, unwanted, indefinite, and unpaid medical leave, which he described as putting her out, blaming her because she allegedly had talked to others about her medical condition. Councilmember King then refused to speak with his female staffer regarding her returning to work for approximately three months and ignored her repeated outreach to him despite the fact that she had provided a doctor's letter making clear that she was able to work. She finally felt she had no choice but to resign her position to pursue paid employment. As to the second and third charges regarding conflicts of interest and disorderly conduct, the evidence presented demonstrated that Councilmember King misappropriated for his personal financial gain 2,000 of a 9,500 council one-time payment directed to a staffer in violation of the city's conflict of interest laws and council rule 10.70 and 10.80. Council member King engaged in this corrupt scheme in July to August of 2019 by awarding that large one-time payment to a staffer and demanding that staffer kick back 2000 of it to him. As to the fourth charge regarding violations of the resolution and disorderly conduct, the evidence presented demonstrated that council member King has repeatedly acted in violation of the resolution that resulted from the 2019 disciplinary proceeding. He never paid the $15,000 fine imposed on him despite being sent a payment plan and then a second more favorable payment plan and multiple, multiple requests for payment. He refused to pay for and take the mandated training and he repeatedly flouted his obligation to cooperate with the monitor 
by routine, routinely attempting to make hiring and employment status decisions without the consent of the monitor, refusing to meet with the monitor or respond to her messages, blocking the monitor from attending staff meetings and treating the monitor abusively and with contempt, including by subjecting her to profanity and sexist remarks. Councilmember King also continued to gender fear in staff and attempted to intimidate them by repeatedly warning them that he had returned from suspension to take back his office. He questioned the loyalty of the staffers who he believed were cooperating with the monitor and treated those staff members adversely. Under the city charter, the council is the judge of the qualifications and conduct of its members and pursuant to council rules, the standards and ethics committee may find that a member has violated its rules and engaged in disorderly conduct. And upon adoption of a report outlining its evidence may recommend sanctions to the full council. This report will be transmitted to the full council later today or tomorrow morning and will, make, will be made public tomorrow. We expect the full council to meet to consider our findings and recommended sanctions next week. We do not take this duty lightly and this is a very serious matter. We found the witnesses credible. In general, they support each other's testimony and there were numerous documents and a recording that also supported many of the charges. The committee was unanimous in its determination that all charges had been substantiated by a preponderance of the evidence. All of our findings on these charges are disturbing, but the lengths to which Councilmember King has gone to evade the sanctions and requirements of the resolution cannot be understated. In voting to impose the sanctions and requirements in the resolution at the full council meeting on October 28, 2019, I stated that a more serious sanction than suspension should be reserved for cases in which we don't think we have any alternatives. Unfortunately, the committee finds that Councilmember King has shown a blatant disregard for rules and policies of the council. This is now the third matter in which King's conduct has led to discipline by the council. Specifically, there were the gender-based harassment complaint in 2017 for which King agreed to a certain discipline. The 29 charges resulting in the suspension and imposition of the monitor, as well as fine and training, and now this set of four charges, all of which we have substantiated. Last year, this committee made every effort to provide Councilmember King the chance to rehabilitate himself and remediate the hostile and unacceptable, unacceptable situation in his office, but he frustrated all of these efforts including by refusing to cooperate with the monitor in any meaningful way and disrespecting her. So now this committee finds the situation to be beyond remediation and therefore finds no alternative but to recommend expulsion. Finally, I would like to reiterate to the public that a copy of the committee's report will be made publicly available tomorrow after its trans transmission to Councilmember King and all other council members. This report will contain the proposed recommend recommended sanction as well. Just to set out the actual vote for the public record, the four charges were unanimously substantiated by a vote of five to zero. The report and recommended sanction were unanimously adopted by the committee. The committee authorized its release and the committee approved the submission of the proposed resolution with a sanction to the full council by a vote of five to zero. I thank you for all of your time and we are now adjourning this meeting. Thank you.